Henry Berinsky was born in Poland in 1911 and as an adult became a Roman Catholic priest. In the chaos of World War II, he was forced to leave the country of his birth. He became a teacher, working for a time in Africa. He then enlisted in the military, serving with the Polish Second Corps for the remainder of the war. He stayed with them after the war ended and arrived with them in England in 1946. He was discharged from his military service in 1949 and remained in the United Kingdom. In October of 1952, he was appointed chaplain of the Polish community in the city of Bradford in West Yorkshire. At the time, Bradford was home to a large number of refugees from Central and Eastern Europe who had come to the UK to escape the communist governments which had come to power in their home countries. The refugee population of the city at the time has been estimated to be around 6,000, with approximately 1,500 of them being Polish, like Berinsky. Father Berinsky's appointment was not without controversy. He was sent to replace Canon Borislav Martinellis, a 58-year-old priest from Lithuania, who had been one of the first refugees to arrive in West Yorkshire after World War II. He had been the first priest to serve the majority of the refugees who arrived in England after him in their new country. Martin Ellis resented Father Berinsky being sent to take over his congregation, and so he refused to leave Bradford. He continued to say mass with a small Lithuanian community in the city who still supported him. Father Berinsky had offered to share duties with Canon Martin Ellis to appease his predecessor, but Martin Ellis refused the offer. While Martin Ellis had supporters who stayed loyal to him even after Father Berinsky arrived in Bradford, Father Berinsky was quickly embraced and beloved by the majority of the people he had been sent to serve. While Martin Ellis was Lithuanian, he was ethnically Polish and spoke the Polish language, which was one of the reasons he had been assigned to minister to the Polish population in Bradford in the first place. Some of the Poles in Bradford may have supported Father Berinsky because he was actually from their native country and had a strong sense of Polish pride. It seems more likely, however, that he received the overwhelming support he had due to his vibrant personality. Canon Martin Ellis is generally referred to as being cold and dour. Father Berinsky, on the other hand, was a dynamic preacher who genuinely enjoyed spending time with his parishioners and took an active interest in them and their daily lives. He was proud of his Polish heritage, and his sense of nationalism inspired his refugee parishioners, whose sense of pride in the land of their birth had been beaten down by war, oppression, and exile. On July 13, 1953, Father Berensky arrived at the door of Canon Martin Ellis's home. When the canon asked him what he was doing there, Father Berensky told him that he had just received a phone call from someone claiming to be speaking on Canon Martinellis's behalf. The caller had asked him to come see Canon Martinellis right away. Martinellis told Berinsky that he had not asked anyone to make such a call, and Berinsky left. Around 7 p.m. that same night, Berinsky answered another phone call at his residence at 82 Little Horton Lane. His landlady, Irena Beck, saw him answer the phone and took note of it because he was behaving strangely. Father Berinsky, who was usually gregarious and pleasant, was speaking in short, clipped sentences. He seemed tense and secretive and cupped his hand over the receiver of the phone so as to keep Irena or her husband from overhearing the conversation he was having in Polish. His strange demeanor worried Mrs. Beck. The last thing Mrs. Beck heard Father Berinsky say before he hung up the phone was okay, I'll go, in Polish. Father Berinsky took his hat and heavy coat, which he should not have needed in the middle of summer, and left the house. He left behind his wallet and his identification papers. This would be the last confirmed sighting of the priest. There is, however, a second-hand report of him running into a parishioner outside of St. Luke's Hospital, after he left his lodging. He reportedly told the parishioner that he did not have time to talk, because he was off to play detective. Father Berinsky's disappearance devastated the members of his parish. 
the Polish community anxiously looked for opportunities to help in the search for their beloved priest. They feared that foul play was the only thing that could have taken Father Berensky from them, and rumors spread throughout Bradford about who could have harmed him. The first and most obvious suspect was Father Berensky's predecessor, Canon Boleslav Martinellis. After Father Berensky went missing, Canon Martinellis downplayed his resentment of him. He claimed to the police that he had not been dismissed from his parish, but had rather resigned due to health problems, and as such, had no motive to harm Father Berensky. This account of him leaving the parish has been widely discredited. As he also pointed out in his interview with police, however, it does seem unlikely that Canon Martinellis could have been directly involved in Father Berensky's disappearance and presumed death due to his physical condition. Father Berensky was 16 years younger than Canon Martinellis. While at 58, Canon Martinellis certainly wasn't ancient, he would probably be more frail than the 42-year-old Father Berensky. Father Berensky was also known for his particularly solid stature, standing around 6 feet tall and approximately 200 pounds. He would have been difficult for the more slight Canon Martinellis to physically overpower, even if the two men had been the same age. There was also a fear that Cold War politics may have caused Father Berensky to meet with foul play. Father Berensky was an outspoken opponent of communism and frequently preached against it in his homilies. In October 1952, he was part of a group of priests who organized a protest against harassment from agents of the Soviet Embassy in London, in Bradford, and the Yorkshire area at large. Refugees from countries behind the Iron Curtain had reported being visited in their homes at night by individuals trying to pressure them into returning to their homelands. Others claimed to have received letters that politely asked them to return, but also contained veiled threats about what would happen to their family members who had not been able to escape to England with them if they did not. There were widespread reports of a ring of KGB agents operating in and surveilling Bradford at the time. Fear and paranoia were prevalent in Bradford. Emboldening the community and speaking out against communism were not unique to Father Berensky, however. As communism was hostile to religion, the communist governments of Eastern and Central Europe persecuted both the church and its clergy. This meant that every priest in the West was opposed to communism, at least in theory, and plenty of them preached against it. Father Berensky would not be worth attacking for foreign agents purely for his protests against communist governments. If he were abducted or killed by foreign agents, it would presumably have to have been because he stumbled upon some sort of specific information about the espionage going on in Bradford, which he potentially could have if he really were playing detective when he left his home on July 13th. Soviet involvement in Father Berensky's disappearance seemed to be confirmed in 1962. Bodan Stashinsky, a KGB officer and assassin who had defected to the West in 1961, claimed to have assassinated Father Berensky using cyanide under orders from Moscow and then buried his body on the Ilkley Moor. 3,000 people from Bradford volunteered to search the moor should Stashinsky's story be confirmed. The story, while it sounded promising, quickly proved untrue. Stashinsky had been in Kiev for training at the time Father Berensky went missing, and he was not trained to use cyanide for assassinations until 1957, four years after Berensky's disappearance. Police did search the moor, but found nothing linked to the case. It is also possible that both espionage and professional jealousy resulted in Father Berensky going missing. Bob Taylor, a retired police officer who re-examined police evidence in the case, alleged on a BBC television show in 2003 that Father Berensky had been murdered by the Polish secret police. He further claimed that Canon Martinellis had been involved in the plot to have him killed. He did concede that Martinellis may not have wanted Father Berensky dead. Rather, he may have been coerced into helping to get Father Berensky by being told that he was only going to be abducted, and that he would have his old position back in his rival's absence. 
Canon Martin Ellis's involvement, Taylor claims, was covered up by the Catholic Church. Canon Martin Ellis willingly working for communists does seem unlikely. He had survived 18 months in a Soviet prison camp during the Second World War and had himself fled to England to escape the expanding reach of communism. That being said, his anger at being replaced could have been used against him, and his desire to have this wrong being righted may have blinded him to what he was really getting into. It is certainly plausible that he may have been pulled into a plot against Father Berensky, with a promise that he could be reinstated to his previous position, not understanding who he was really working with, or even what they were really planning to do to Father Berensky. He may not have grasped the reality of what was going to happen to Father Berensky until after he was already gone. Canon Martin Ellis may also have gotten a sense that something terrible was going to happen at the last minute, and made an attempt to save his rival. It is possible that the first phone call Father Berensky received on July 13th was meant to be the original lure to whatever fate ultimately became of him. If Canon Martin Ellis did have the phone call summoning Father Berensky to his home made on behalf of the people he was working with, he may have lied about it once he was faced with Father Berensky. Canon Martin Ellis may have sent the younger priest away, claiming to have never asked for such a call to be made in an attempt to save Berensky from the plot against him. While we know Canon Martin Ellis resented Father Berensky for replacing him, we have no evidence that he would go so far as to want the fellow priest to be murdered. Even if Canon Martin Ellis was not involved with the plot against Father Berensky himself, that does not mean that he did not know what happened to him. He could have been made aware of what happened to his rival in confession. In the Catholic Church, individuals can confess their sins to a priest and receive absolution for them. Priests are absolutely forbidden to reveal anything told to them during confession. Violating the seal of the confessional and betraying the confidence of someone seeking penance is one of the worst things a priest could do in the eyes of the church. A priest will be subject to excommunication for doing such a thing. If someone confessed to Canon Martin Ellis that they played a part in the death of Father Berensky during the sacrament of penance, he would be unable to do anything about it due to his religious beliefs. A less popular theory of who may have made Father Berensky disappear holds that he was killed by one of Canon Martin Ellis's supporters in Bradford. While Canon Martin Ellis was nowhere near as charismatic as Father Berensky, he did have parishioners who were loyal to him in the Lithuanian community. If someone confessed to him that they had killed Father Berensky in an ill-advised attempt at helping Canon Martin Ellis get his old position back, he could not share that information and quite possibly felt guilt over being the reason behind another man's murder. Since he could not reveal the crime, and felt some sense of responsibility for it, he may have also helped cover it up after the fact. Martin Ellis purchased 60 pounds of caustic soda around the time Father Berensky went missing. The purpose of this purchase was never determined. Documents from the police files from the original investigation speculate that this amount of caustic soda could have been used to dissolve a body buried underground in a matter of weeks. It is possible that Canon Martin Ellis acquired the caustic soda to help Father Berensky's killer dispose of his body. The idea that Martin Ellis had information about Father Berensky's fate, whether because he had been involved in bringing it about, or just learned of it after the fact, is supported by the apparent decline in his mental status after Father Berensky went missing. Three weeks after Father Berinsky's disappearance, Canon Martin Ellis was found collapsed in his study. On his desk, the phrase Keep Silent Priest in Polish had been spelled out using matchsticks to form the letters. Martin Ellis told his niece that two men had come to his door to speak with him, and he had invited them into the study. He then felt a sharp pain on the back of his head and could remember nothing after that. A neighbor who had helped get the cannon out of the house and to the hospital told the newspaper that he had seen a large bruise on the back of his head. 
Police were skeptical about Cannon Martinellis' story from the very beginning. The Cannon did eventually call the account into question himself as well. Accounts vary, but the Cannon either told the police that it never happened, or that it was possible that he had imagined it. If the attack never occurred, this would mean that the ominous matchstick message would have been a warning he was trying to get across to himself. In either case, the incident certainly does not indicate that Canon Martin Ellis's mind was at ease in the aftermath of Father Berensky going missing. Canon Martin Ellis did not have to live with this mental stress for very long. He died of a heart attack in 1955, just two years after Father Berensky vanished. The shadow of Father Berensky's disappearance was so dark on Canon Martin Ellis's reputation that the Bishop of Leeds, John Heenan, had to address the rumors of Martin Ellis's involvement in the case during his funeral mass. He assured the congregation that the idea of Canon Martin Ellis being involved in harming another priest was absurd. He did concede, however, that the Canon's mind had been troubled ever since Father Berinsky disappeared. In the years since Father Berinsky went missing, the threat of Soviet spies has been lifted from the Polish community in Bradford, but not the desire for answers about what became of their beloved chaplain. While Father Berensky may not be in Bradford anymore, his reputation certainly lives on. His congregants raised their children on tales of the great priest who was mysteriously taken from them too soon. <laughs>